Hi guys, this is Alice. And I'm Sean from Straight Code. So today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about building a shoe bot. Right now in the shoe marketplace, there is a lot going on where uh, casual hobbyists aren't really able to pick up shoes that they want, a lot of rare collectible shoes. So we kind of wanted to put some free information out there for anyone that was hoping to be able to maybe get some shoes themselves without uh, spending thousands of dollars. So here are uh, three simple steps to create your own shoe bot. I think it's always really good to uh, familiarize yourself a little bit with the websites, its HTML structures, and come up with a really brief, simple plan. And so you can create function uh, based on your plan. In the end, they can all work together. In this video, I'm going to cover uh, creating the plans as well as um, creating our first functions and we will in the end need two functions and the second function will be in the next videos. Okay so what I want this bot to do is first I wanted to allow inputs so let's say I'm looking for a particular shoe with name of shoe one then I should be able to put in shoe one the bot would start whenever I call for it to start and it will continue to monitor the website until the items, the product shoe one, become available or when it shows up on the website, then I will immediately purchase, the bot will automatically purchase that shoe for me. So these are the things I'm trying to get done. So to create a plan, I'll think, okay, for continuous monitoring, uh, I probably need a while loop. I probably need um, to check its API and to see whether the item had become available and I'll go more detail into that part to uh, automatically purchase the item I'm probably going to be using selenium so that would be my really brief plan obviously we want to be able to create two functions like we talked about earlier one is to monitor one is to purchase I'm gonna create a function later called availability check that should allow me to put in the product name so this function should continues to monitor it right and I'm going to build a second function called by products in this example and you, you can name it however you want um, and it would taking uh, the URL of the product and go ahead and purchase that product for me so that's kind of the end of brief plan I have and now we in this video cover how to build availability check function in the next video, we're going to build the byproduct function. Lastly, we'll put them all together, right? This is kind of how the logic goes. If the product is available and somehow I should um, let the function be able to tell me whether something's available or not. And if it is available, I should purchase the product. If it is not, I will print not available. And this might seem a little bit complex right now, but we'll go more into this details to it and it will make more sense. Hey guys, so like Alice was saying, we're going to uh, start with the shoebot example using the feature sneaker boutique. Uh, and she most likely mentioned that this is just a simple Shopify store. This technique can be used on almost any Shopify store out there. So let's just go ahead and dive straight into the code then. Before you begin, there's really just two packages you're going to need for Python. And I want to say that for this video, we're using Python 3.6. This should work with 3.7 or 3.5 as well, but I would just make sure that you have some at least semi-recent version of Python. There will be a link in the description to download. So, so the two packages that you're going to need are requests and JSON. And JSON is actually built into the Python libraries by standard, so you won't actually have to do anything to get this if you already have Python. But to get requests, you will have to install it. And there will be a link to the documentation for requests in the description as well. However, to install it, I would just go ahead and open pip and you know run pip install requests. Requests is really great because it basically allows you to access website information without popping up any sort of browser or doing so I'm, I'm going to show you exactly sort of what that means I'm going to go over here to the console and just import requests really quick all right so once we've got requests I'm going to do this little line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pass in the URL that we want to get data from so uh, 
like I said, we're going to be dealing with feature sneakerboutique.com. And I'm going to go ahead and go straight to the slash products that Jason page here. Okay. And so you see all this all this data, and it kind of looks like nonsense, actually, if you look at it. Uh, but with the help of requests, we might be able to organize this a little bit. But to start, though, I'm just going to go ahead and pass that right in here. R equals requests.get. And then the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that R, which is for our R for response, and I'm going to pass that in with the JSON library. And that is just to organize all the data that we're getting from the API. So to do that, I'm going to say products are equal to json.loads r.text. And then this right here is me passing the key. Uh, so all a lot of the JSON data is just in key value pairs. So I'm passing the products key, and it should return all the values that match products to me, which is hopefully everything that you want. Oh, oh right, I didn't import JSON, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's try that one again. All right, cool. So let's see what we got for products. Now I think that at this stage it's probably going to still look like mumbo jumbo, but it looks a little bit cleaner than on the website, and I think what you'll see is that we're about to clean it up a whole lot. So let me just scroll to the bottom of this here. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and I'm going to create a simple loop to go through all the products that we just gathered with requests and JSON. Uh, so that we can actually start to look at what some of these things are. So the loop will be for product and products. Um, what I'm going to actually go ahead and do, what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to just print the, each product that we get. That way you guys can kind of see how unwieldy some of the data might look initially. Go ahead and run our script. It is. And this should be a little bit cleaner than before, but still probably not ideal. Okay, so what's that? That looks like nonsense. It looks exactly like what was on the website. So instead of just printing out the product, I'm going to go ahead and print out a specific key. Now you might be wondering what that means, and I'll show you right now. So as we're looking through this stuff, if you notice there are values, for instance, ID, and then a colon, and then some other a value that goes with the uh, key ID right here. If I want to just get the value for a certain key, I can do that. And to do that is pretty simple. Instead of just printing the product, what I'm going to do is print the product where the key is title. And the way I know this key title is simply just by looking. So nothing too complex there. All right, and take a look at that. Now what we got back in return is just a list of titles of each product that the store has. OK, so now this is pretty great because we have gotten all the exact product names that are inside the, the website out and printed on the screen for us right here. So now comes the question of how are we going to figure out if the product that we want is available? Well, to start with, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable name for what I just did. I'm going to say product name is equal to the product with our key of title. Okay, And now, now that I have it in a variable, I can run an if test on it. So I could say something like if product name is, and since this is just an example, I'm just going to grab a standard thing right here, a 6 gel Kayano 5 OG. Um, I don't really know what those shoes are, but that's fine. So I'm going to say if the product name is that, then let's just go ahead and print the product name again. And this is really useful for me because I, I, well, I mostly do this kind of thing just to make sure that my logic isn't messed up. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and then see what happens. And sure enough, look at that. So we got we got the A6 gel Kayano 5 OG out. So we successfully have been able to find the specific shoe that we're looking for.
Okay, so now we've we've gotten our test to see if the product that we're searching for is available, but how are we going to get the URL that the product resides on so that we can go ahead and automatically purchase it afterwards? It's actually pretty simple. The path to the URL on any Shopify site is going to be name of Shopify store dot com slash products slash name of our product. So um, the name of our product, we can't just pass it in like this uh, because there's spaces and there's, you know, well, sometimes there's special symbols and everything. Um, but inside the API, that we're already making a request to, there is a key to get the product name for that specific URL. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. We already have our list of products here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the first product, product zero. Okay. Oh, right. So product zero. That so the zeroth key in Python is the first element. So we get it. We get this return. Now. I want to use the um, the key to get the specific product name URL is handle. Boom. And this is going to be the last part of the URL. Okay. So the URL here would be I'm going to name it product URL. And it is going to be equal to featuresneakerboutique.com slash products slash, let's get that dot out of there, make this a string, slash products slash, um, and we will do slash the product and the handle of it. Okay, and so now it's we should only be getting this product URL once we are at the exact shoe that we're looking for. And sort of prove this out, I'm going to go ahead and print the product URL once this runs. Okay, so that's our product URL, and now I'll quickly go and visit this to confirm. What do you know? There we are. So now we have the product URL for our specific product, our specific pair of shoes. So the last thing that we want to do is sort of package this whole thing up so that it will always return the URL that we want, and then we can build out our system to automatically purchase it. So to package it up, what I usually do is just write a function. So what I'm going to call this function is availability check just like that and we'll go ahead and tab out here uh, and instead of printing the product URL I think what we ought to do is go ahead and return the product URL once we get it and this is going to be great because it will allow us to later purchase this automatically if we don't end up getting a product URL, I'm going to send a different signal to our second system, and it's just going to say false. And that will make a whole lot more sense as we dive into the purchasing system in the next video. Okay, guys, so that's it for this video. Make sure and watch for the next video where we're going to build out the system that actually goes in and automatically purchases the shoe for whatever shoe or product that we're looking for.